well, Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan, made a comment. I see this flash uh, on the screen. I was on Twitter at the time from The Hill. Kagan warns that Supreme Court legitimacy at risk if it strays too far from public sentiment. Public sentiment. I said, hmm, let's see what she said. This, I actually thought it was a headline. You know how sometimes they put these headlines out and they're not actually what the person said? I've had it happen to me. So I go to the page and I read the quote. So let's read it together. I'm not talking about any particular decision or even any particular series of decisions, but if over time the court loses all connection with the public and with public sentiment, that's a dangerous thing for a democracy. No, the headline was accurate. So I, you know, one of those moments, you know how it goes for me, head spins around. Does she not understand her job? All I learned from this is that she doesn't understand her job. She's not supposed to care. She's a Supreme Court justice. She's supposed to be issuing her rulings based on the law. She's not supposed to care about public sentiment. All this told me is that Elena Kagan decides how she's going to rule about something based on the way the wind is blowing that day. Oh, right now, these are the issues that matter to people. Well, then I should rule like this. Oh, in 10 years, now the tide has turned and people feel differently. Well, now I should rule like this. So it's not about the law. Again, these people don't live in the land of facts. They don't. They live in this subjective, kind of blurry, it kind of always looks like an impressionist painting. You know those paintings? You go into the museum from far away, it's like, oh, there's such clarity. You go up close and it just looks like a bunch of dots. You're like, what's going on? You feel like you're in some type of psychedelic something. They live in the land of make-believe. Like, this is utterly ridiculous. Also, she just told you how liberal Supreme Court justices think. When these people talk, listen. Listen to what they're saying. They are telling you what they're doing. Believe them the first time, learn from it, and remember it. This is that concept of a living and breathing constitution where nothing really means anything. This is that concept of, well, the law means you know X, Y, and Z. It's the whole thing. It goes into the gender debate, oh, male, female, what's that? It's you know just sort of this floating identity. It's a feeling. It pervades everything is what I'm saying to you. So just be on the lookout. And this is why it becomes really important to elect a president that can nominate these people. A lot of people voted for Trump. Again, not because they were so excited about Trump or you know, maybe some of them were excited about Trump, but a lot of them were like, I have my reservations, but we need those Supreme Court justices that don't think like this, that aren't gonna make their decisions based on the way the wind is blowing that day, that year, that minute. What a dangerous thing to say. And also, she said it public. She just, they have no shame. They're proud of that stance. They're not worried that you or I are going to come back and say, well, Elena, that's not your job. Sorry, but you're not a political commentator. You're not supposed to be looking at the mood of the country. You're, that's not, you're not a pollster. You're, you're a Supreme Court justice. You know, if you can't do the job properly, you shouldn't be there. You should not have that enormous honor and responsibility disgraceful. Absolutely. So much so that I had to pause my discussion of Pat Benatar. Well, Pat, and and who's, who's public sentiment? The who, same well, people right. that never leave Washington? The same right. people that hang out in New York and California? And it, who's public sentiment? Well, I doubt she watches Fox News. So what, CNN, MSNBC? Mm -hmm. It's... <laughs> It's the public sentiment of people who agree with her politically. Right. That's all. Right. It's the news outlets that agree with her politically. It's like the 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 liberal enclaves throughout the country. I, that's why, you know, we had that conversation a few weeks ago about the Electoral College. And I know that can get weedsy, but, you know, that exists because you don't want New York and California and these liberal enclaves to make rules for the whole country. You have a whole beautiful, gorgeous, diverse, incredible country out there. These people aren't interested they're not. They're interested in the way, you know, Los Angeles and New York City and Chicago and, you know, I hate to say it, but even Miami, I would say. Miami's not. People say, oh, no, Florida's different. Mm, Miami. Mm, I don't know. And I also still think Florida's going to be closer than people realize. I do. I think Florida is still a really interesting place to vote. We'll see. We'll see if I'm wrong, if I'm right. But I think when it comes to a presidential election, Florida is going to be fascinating this next round, which is why I'm really excited to be here. For once, I get to vote and it, it maybe the election doesn't get the results don't get called within three and a half seconds after I leave the poll. New York, it's like I vote. I'm all excited. It's like I'm the Democrat. I'm like, I'm not even home yet. I'm not even home yet. That's boring. So, Elena, figure out uh, a different line of work. If this is your perception of what your job should be, that's not what you're there to do. And it's disgraceful that you said it with no shame. She should come out and say, oh, my gosh, I, I don't know. But no, 
Because media won't hold her accountable for that. Nobody will hold her accountable for that. They'll be like, they, they will agree. Oh, good. We have someone in there that's easily manipulated by public opinion. Amazing. That's what we want. Forget the law. To hell with the law. That doesn't matter. Facts don't matter. We know that. What a bunch of maniacs. Well, and it's, it's, it, this ties in a little more to the uh, <clears throat> erasure of the Electoral College. But it, the arrogance of people nowadays, the, the founding fathers were some of the most educated people of all time. They were so incredibly well-read. They were so studied in history. They they knew so much. And the arrogance of today that, oh, well, we live in 2022, so automatically we're so right. much smarter than these people. These people knew more than you. In the Period, meantime, 20, end of story. In they the meantime, 2022, how much has fallen apart? Right. I mean, they know so much. In the meantime, everything's falling apart everywhere you look. I mean, it's just decay, rot. Breakdown of the family, cities up in flames. I'll never forget that clip. Oh, I forget where it was. Maybe Tyler, you would remember where <laughs> CNN did a. There was a clip about. I don't know if it was some protest or something, and he was like, "It's mostly peaceful," and it was like things were on fire. The, the summer of love. Yeah, that's on where fire. the mostly peaceful protest. Yeah, the building was on fire on in the fire, background, and he's on live TV again. You know, and uh, my friend Jesse Kelly, who we're going to try to get on here as well, uh, I just had an exchange with him. Hopefully he'll come on. He's fantastic and h hilarious and apparently makes the best cheeseburger ever. I need a taste test, just going to say. But he always has this sky is green theory where they can convince you of anything. They wanted you to believe the building's on fire behind you. But don't worry. That's not. No. In the land of make believe, I'm telling you that it's peaceful. So as a result, you should believe that. I mean, this is this is the world we're living in. If you like the short clip, you can catch another one here or you can catch the full episode right here.